Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We want to go ahead and uh, go into a word of prayer as we begin our Sunday school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wanted to do uh, a word of prayer before we go into uh, our Sunday school uh, period. If you would just join me with your, your head bowed and your eyes closed. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again uh, for the opportunity to connect virtually, Father God, and worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask, Father God, that you would uh, grant us uh, understanding uh, ears and tender hearts. Yes. Uh, speak through uh, us, Father God, and give us the opportunity to understand something from your word that will help us in these coming days, weeks, months, and years. Yes. We ask these and all of the blessings in the precious and powerful name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 So with uh, things that are going on right now, uh, a lot of us may seem or may feel uh, cooped up. You know, we've been in the house and uh, we find ourselves uh, in some cases uh, being uh, around our family uh, more than we have in the past. Yeah. And now we're finding out maybe some things that we didn't know or that we forgot. And we're being reminded of certain people's habits. We're being reminded yeah. of the, everyone's uh, a little eccentricities and, and, and behaviors and things of that nature. And so sometimes that can cause tension. Yeah. That can cause tension. Uh, amongst the family. Um, and so it's it's interesting how uh, spending more time with those that we love, we always yearn for, yeah. uh, but yet we find ourselves other places. We find ourselves at work. We find ourselves at school. We find ourselves at play. And now we're in a situation where we are uh, around our loved ones. And sometimes we might be around our loved ones, but we may have spent enough time that we don't like them as much <laughs> as we did when we were apart. And so there, the Bible has very much to say about family life and things of that nature. Um, I, I do want to uh, recall to mind, uh, football fans will definitely be familiar uh, with this story. Uh, the story uh, is of a football coach named Vincent Lombardi. Vince Lombardi, very well known. And uh, his team was the Green Bay Packers and they suffered a crushing defeat uh, in 1961. Uh, they fought hard to get all the way to the Super Bowl and um, the NFL championship. And, and they were uh, defeated, had a brutal, brutal loss to the Philadelphia Eagles that particular year. Fast forward after their loss, it comes to summertime and they're getting ready to start the uh, camp to get ready for the next season. And Vince Lombardi, uh, great coach that he was, he began the uh, new football season uh, holding up a football. And he said these five words, gentlemen, this is a football. Now, now be it said that this is a professional football team. Yeah. They made it to the championship just the past year. Yeah. However, after this defeat, this legendary coach, Vince Lombardi, decided that we needed to get back yeah. to the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And so in order to start the new season, he reminds them, gentlemen, this is a football. When things get tough and when you find yourself that you've had some setbacks in life, sometimes we need to remember the fundamentals. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, believers in Jesus Christ, this is a Bible. Yeah. This is a Bible. 
And the Bible has much to say. If you would turn with me, we're going to center our thoughts around Malachi chapter 4, three verses, verse 4 through 6. And we're also going to visit some selected scriptures that's going to tell us a little bit about how to flesh out remembering the fundamentals. I'm just going to read it for you out of the New King James Version. Three short verses. Again, Malachi chapter 4. We're going to commence in verse 4 and conclude in verse 6. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in Horeb for all Israel, with the statutes and the judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. All right. If you would, again, just, just think from the thought, remembering the fundamentals, remembering the fundamentals. If we would just, just, just take a look at, at uh, verse 4, there's an encouragement from Malachi, and this is the last uh, prophet that God is going to use. We see this as the last book of the Old Testament until we get into the Gospels. And Malachi is summarizing his message to the nation of Israel. And there are some things that he wants to get across to them that, that maybe they've forgotten along the way. Yeah. I mean, they've been exiled. They've come out of exile. They're back in their land, but there's some things that need to be done. There's some, there's some things that they need to remember to make sure that going forward, that they can claim the promises that God has already made for them. Yeah. So first of all, he, he is calling for them to remember the law of Moses. And when they say the law of Moses, this is referring uh, in general to the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Okay, This is the, 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 the Torah um, that the uh, Jews had, what we call our Old Testament, the first five books uh, referred to as the Pentateuch. And specifically, when uh, he's calling to them the law of Moses, he says, which I commanded him from Horeb. And Horeb was just another name for Mount Sinai. Yeah. Mount Horeb, Mount Sinai, their equivalent. So specifically, he's saying, remember the law of Moses, which I commanded at Horeb. So that's telling us that specifically, I need you as a nation of Israel, to remember the Ten Commandments. Yeah. Remember the Ten Commandments. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, beginning at verse 3. Can you name the Ten Commandments right off the top of your head? If not, that's okay. But Jews... At the, at, at the time that Malachi was written, this is something that would be expected. Yeah. At the very least, that the Ten Commandments should be memorized and internalized so that you could behave accordingly. Yeah. So as a family unit, we can learn a lot from the Decalogue and making sure that we are taken care of abiding by what God has given in his word. And so let's take a look again at, at Exodus. And so there's the first four commandments that have to do with God. You shall have no other gods before me. Yeah. You shall not make for yourself a carved image. Your Bible might say a graven image. So 
uh, no idols. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain and remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor and you shall not covet your neighbor's house, your neighbor's wife, so on and so forth. And so just taking a look at these basic tenets of faith, of how we ought to behave and conduct ourselves, that gives us a playbook as to how we should interact with each other. Because obviously your closest neighbor is not the one next door. Your closest neighbor is the one down the hall. Your closest neighbor is your wife, your husband, your children, those that are in your immediate household. You don't have to go past your own address to find a neighbor. And so if we were to, number one, make sure that we have our correct vertical relationship with God in the first four, then that makes it a lot easier with our horizontal relationships in the last six. Mm -hmm. So if we have no other gods before the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, before the God of our fathers, before Jesus Christ, then that means that number one, we're going to exclusively hold to the teachings of the Bible. Mm -hmm. You shall not make for yourself a carved image in this modern day you know, a carved image, you might think that, well, that's all gone in ancient days, you know, but now the new idol is ourselves. We live in a me generation where we are so concerned about me and mine that we don't even have to take the time to carve out an idol from wood and stone because we make idols of ourselves all the time. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Are the things of God kept holy in your household? Are you playing with the things of God? Remember the Sabbath day. Now, some people might say, well, Reverend, Sabbath's not in the New Testament. All the rest of them are duplicated, except for the Sabbath. And you'd be correct. However, while the Jewish Sabbath, in terms of the sunset to sunrise observance, we may not observe as New Testament believers, the concept of working six days and having a day to rest still continues. And also taking a day that we are to reflect, which we take Sundays, to celebrate and worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Then going further, children, young adults and adults, honor your father and your mother. You shall not murder. Now you may say, well, Sean, I'm not a murderer. You know, well, you may not have physically murdered someone. But what about character assassination? Yeah. What about how you speak to your children? You shall not commit adultery. Well, I stepped out of my my marriage. I haven't never done that. What about in your heart? Yeah. What are you looking at when you're at work? When you're at home? When a glance turns into a gaze, you shall not steal. I earned everything I got. Okay. Okay. Even when you went to H&R Block, Jackson Hewitt, was that all accounted for? You got all those receipts? Maybe something that the company bought, made it back to your house. 
You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Not lying, not misrepresenting. And you shall not covet. If you got all the other nine, this is the one that'll get you. That's what Paul said. Like, I can't get around that one. I kept everything else. But you shall not covet. That's the one that if you can find a way in to, to and somehow convince yourself that you haven't lied, cheated, stole, even thought about it ever, there's some covetousness that was somewhere. Yeah. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory. The point, the point is not that have you attained this moral perfection yourself. The point is, is recognizing that there's no way that we can do it apart from Jesus Christ yeah. doing it for us, yeah. but that we should strive as much as possible to reach this goal. Yeah. Repetition always indicates importance, and we see this repeated again in Deuteronomy 5. Yeah. So we see that this is very important. In Malachi, this is what he's trying to call back is remember the law of Moses. I want he he wants you to remember the fundamentals of how to live. Yeah. Look at Deuteronomy four, chapter nine. I'm sorry, De Deuteronomy Deuteronomy four, verse nine through ten. Only take heed to yourself and diligently keep yourself, lest you forget the things your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Watch this and teach them to your children and your grandchildren, especially concerning the day the but you stood before the Lord, your God in Horeb. When the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words that they may learn to fear me all the days they live on earth and that they may teach their children. So the Bible places a heavy emphasis on not just individually you learning yeah. the Ten Commandments and how to live that out in your life, but also to teach the next generation and the generation after that. This yeah. is what Malachi is trying to get across because what happens is if we only take heed to ourselves, yeah. diligent keep to ourselves, we just are concerned about us. You'll forget the things that you've seen. You forget the things that God has done in your life. You'll yeah. forget the things that have happened and what he's brought you out of. You'll forget these things and they're going to depart from your heart. We don't want to be in that situation. And he's trying to show you how to make sure by calling back to mind these things, because the Jewish mind would recall this reading, remember the law of Moses. They would recall not only the Decalogue, but they would call the repetition in Deuteronomy, the, the giving again, the second time around. Teach them to your children and grandchildren. How much time are you taking after you've given your children to Caesar for seven or eight class periods every day how much time are you taking to walk them through the things of God? Yeah. They took Texas history, American history, yeah. world history. What have they heard from the Bible? You allowed them to read the Houston Chronicle. Yeah. How much time have they spent in first and second Chronicles? Mm -hmm. Teach them to your children and your grandchildren. So the, the most important prayer that the Jews would pray would be the Shema. You can find it in Deuteronomy 6. And we hear it in verses 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. So it's not just an intellectual ascent. Yeah. This isn't just an exercise to complete and turn in. This is something that has to be in your heart. Watch this. Look at the emphasis again. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, 
when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your head and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So again, we see uh, remembering the fundamentals to teach the statutes and ordinances of God to our children. And it says, do it when you're sitting in the house. Do it when you walk by the way. So when you're out and about doing it, when you lie down. So before they go to bed and when you rise up. So that's at least four times during the day that we should be sharing in the moments of everyday life. It doesn't take Wednesday night at 7 p.m., Sunday morning at nine o'clock in order for us to teach our children the word of God. It shouldn't be just the formal church services. It's every day throughout the day. Yeah. And we see Joshua in chapter one, verse seven to nine, that, that also emphasizes this as well. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law of Moses. My servant commanded you, do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left. Why? That you may prosper wherever you go. If you're looking for some real prosperity preaching, it's right here in Joshua. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Pastor Tim already preached to us that, that that our God is everywhere at the same time. And so we're being reminded here in the book of Joshua that the that the Lord God is with us wherever we go. And he's giving us a blueprint, a plan, a playbook, a strategy. As to how we can prosper and have good success again. This is a Bible. This is a Bible. So not only do, do we need to remember the fundamentals of the law for living every day, we also need to remember the fundamentals of prophecy, the fundamentals of prophecy. Where am I getting that? Look at, again, our our, uh, text that we began with, Malachi chapter 4, look at verse 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. What he's trying to get across now is to make sure that The Jews at the time were understanding that they were living in this fashion in order to prepare themselves for the day of the Lord. They were preparing themselves for the time when Messiah would return and uh, that they would experience what they call shalom. It's their word for peace, the Hebrew word for peace. And that's what he was. That's what all Jews were looking forward to. And whenever Jesus came, they were looking towards Jesus establishing his kingdom in an earthly realm. And because that didn't happen the way they wanted it to happen, that's why they rejected their Messiah. They did not recognize the time of their visitation. And so there's a encouragement to remember the fundamentals of, of, of prophecy. And if you look at Deuteronomy chapter 30, There's an encouragement. Now it shall come to pass when all these things have come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among the nations where the Lord your God drives you, and you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice 
according to all that I command you today, you and your children, with all your heart and with all your soul. So there's a promise that, hey, if you return to the Lord and obey his voice, obey his commandments, then I will give you the shalom you're looking for. Yeah. But what it requires is you and your children to obey with all your heart and with all your soul. Yes. If you want to see some of the blessings and cursings, you can look at Deuteronomy 28 and you can read the blessings and cursings that were promised for Israel. And it was very simple. Obedience, get the blessings. Disobedience, get the curses. Very black and white, very simple. But God has always set apart, even when there was tremendous disability, and this is why he, uh, uh, disobedience, this is why he mentions Elijah, is because during Elijah's day, the nation of Israel was at one of the worst points in terms of its, its obedience to God. But even at that lowest point, in, if you look at 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 18, God says, yet I have reserved 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed to Baal and every mouth that has not kissed him. God always has a remnant of those that are obedient to him. There's always going to be a representative that God is going to have right now in the church age, we are his representatives. Yeah. And we are the ones that have been set aside, that our knees have not bowed to Baal, to idols. Look at verse six, and he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and turn the hearts of children to the fathers. The reason Malachi is saying this is because when Jerusalem was getting sacked, things got really, really bad. Yeah. I mean, guys, COVID-19 has nothing on the siege of Jerusalem. Yeah. It got really bad, y'all. Let me tell you how bad it got. Look at Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 7 through 10. Ezekiel chapter 5, verse 7 through 10. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, because you have multiplied disobedience more than the nations around you. So that means that y'all are supposed to be saved. Yeah. Y'all are acting worse than the heathens. Yeah. You have not walked in my statutes, nor kept my judgments, nor even done according to the judgments of the nations that are all around you. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, indeed, I, even I, am against you and will execute judgments in your midst and in the sight of the nations. And I will do among you what I have never done and the like of which I will never do again because of all your abominations. Therefore, your fathers shall eat their sons in your midst and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments among you and all of you who remain, I will scatter to all the winds. It got so bad that there was literally cannibalism that was going on. And here's the deal, is that that was brought on because of the gross disobedience yeah. that the nation of Israel displayed to God. And so in modern days, we're not cannibalizing each other. We're, 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 we're not having those things. but. But what are we doing in terms of our thought life and our and what we feel about other people? Are we doing or saying things that are devouring yeah. other people Indeed. that are demeaning yeah. other people, especially those in our household? Are we building up our children, our nieces, our nephews, our friends? Or are we tearing them down? Yeah. Hmm. We got to remember the fundamentals is that we cannot be against each other and also claim at the same time that we're the people of God. Yeah. But Malachi bringing up this tragic portion of history is saying that it's not going to be that way going forward. 
And so not only remember the fundamentals of the law for living and the, remember the fundamentals of prophecy for the future, but also remember the fundamentals of the spirit. Okay, remember the fundamentals of the spirit because Malachi, he's, his, his uh, thought of turning the hearts of fathers to the children and children to the fathers is going to get picked up in Luke. You can see it, Luke chapter 1, verse 15 to 17. Uh, and this is referring to John the Baptist. It says, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. Notice how he's uh, showing that this is going to be done through the spirit and that you have the people that are the children looking to their father, to God. He will also go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So Malachi is trying to prepare the nation of Israel as a people for the Lord. And we should be doing the same thing in our own household and also in the household of faith. Yeah. We should be trying to prepare to make ready a people. So the greatest commandment that we have, we see the New Testament version. We've already read it in the Shema. But if you again keep going into uh, look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 36, where Jesus is asked, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. See, Moses was a type for the law. Yeah. When Moses is said, and it's not specifically referring to him as a person, when they say the book of Moses or just Moses, they're referring to the Pentateuch. And then many times Elijah is referred to to represent the whole of the prophets. So the whole of the law and the prophets are highlighted here in the answer that Jesus gave in terms of the greatest commandment. Yeah. And you might be saying, well, that explains the hearts of the fathers and the hearts of the children, but there's this last part here about a curse. Yeah. And you're right, right here in verse six. Lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. So the Jews were warned that, hey, if you don't do this, yeah. just same way you were cursed in the sacking of Jerusalem, yeah. you can be cursed going forward. Right now, the, the, the nation of Israel is in unbelief and they're constantly at war with the surrounding nations. Yeah. And that's something that we should pray about, yeah. that, they, that, they, that they would be kept. And, and, and the Bible uh, gives us plenty of evidence that, that Israel will be kept. But I'm just so thankful that I don't have to deal with that curse myself. Yeah. And you can look at Galatians 3 and 13 to figure out why, as a believer, you don't have to deal with that. Galatians chapter 3, church, uh, verse 13 to 14, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, yeah. having become a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, yeah. that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Yeah. That's that prophecy that we're looking at, that that has been prophesied and it has come to pass, but there's still some things that we have to look forward to. Things that sometimes when things get hard, whenever you're trying really hard to remember the law, you're trying to follow the 10 commandments, you're trying to remember the prophecy, so you have a future and a hope, just hang on to this in Revelation 20 and 6. Blessed and holy is he who is part in the first resurrection. Over such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, 
and shall reign with him a thousand years. That's the future. Yeah. Right now, we're in a time of training to be prepared for a time of reigning yeah. with Christ. And Jesus even gave us a further detail. Jesus said in, in uh, Matthew chapter 19, verse 28, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. So that we as believers, we are following what Jesus Christ has taught us, the whole counsel of God, that we are even judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Yeah. Now, I know right now things might be tough, but I'll leave you with one last scripture, Revelation 21, chapter 4 through 5. That if you keep holding on, yeah. Pastor Tim was singing about it, holding yeah. on to God's unchanging hand, yeah. that this will be a reality for you one day, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Yeah. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. Yeah. For the former things have passed away. Yeah. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, write, for these words are true and faithful. Yeah. True and faithful. Now, we started with uh, the Green Bay Packers and, and Vince Lombardi. And they put in, even in an earthly sense, the idea of remembering the fundamentals. Yeah. Well, the next year, hmm. after they had that training camp, they went on to win the NFL championship, yeah. 37 to zero. Remember the fundamentals. Yeah. Remember the fundamentals. May God bless you and keep you is my prayer. Uh, that's what we have for, for Sunday school. Amen. Um, hope that we take this uh, today, the coming weeks, the coming months, that we can remember the fundamentals so we can all get along uh, with our families and with the household of faith yeah. uh, and the world at large. Amen. 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 So if you are uh, on the conference call, we'll go ahead and disconnect the conference call. Brother Zach's going to disconnect our live. God bless you and keep you is our prayer.